Hi, my name is Anna Miles Firmikoff, and I'm a staff attorney with the Family Permanency Project of Children's Law Center. I'm here today to talk to you about guardianship law and practice. We're going to start by talking about what guardianship is and the legal relationship it creates. Guardianship is a permanency option for children who have been adjudicated neglected. It was created as an alternative to custody and also to an adoption. It, it, if there was a spectrum of permanency options for children, guardianship would fall in between custody and adoption. It creates a more permanent relationship for children than custody, but it doesn't go as far as terminating parental rights the way adoption does, and for this reason it's often the most appealing option for older children or when the caretaker taking the child in is a relative who doesn't want to go through the process of terminating children, parents' parental rights. In order for um, someone to apply for guardianship, the child in question needs to have been adjudicated neglected. The stated purpose of the guardian statute in DC is to increase the opportunity for the prompt permanent placement of children, especially with relatives, without ongoing government supervision. Essentially, it takes children out of foster care. It allows the neglect case to go dormant, and so the children are no longer being monitored constantly by the government, and it allows relatives to take them in and gives them the benefits of a subsidy and also the legal rights to make decisions for them. Guardianship is similar to legal custody in that the, the custodial rights are allocated between the parent and the caretaker. This makes it a lot more appealing to parents and relative caretakers because it doesn't terminate the parent-child relationship in its entirety, but it does allow the caretaker to make all the necessary legal decisions for the child if the parent's not able to do so. The guardian is granted sole or primary physical and legal custody for an indefinite period of time. This can be changed with a motion to modify in which the person seeking modification of the guardianship order has to show that there's been a material change of circumstances since the guardianship was granted. This aspect of guardianship also makes it more appealing to relatives and birth parents because there's an understanding that if the birth parent were to be able to come to take care of a child at some point in the future, that they would be able to come back to court and seek modification of the guardianship order. In this sense, it's considerably less permanent than adoption, but for a lot of families who have been involved with the foster care system, it's a more palatable and a more realistic option. In a guardianship motion and a guardianship proceeding, a successor guardian is often designated. This can be important because often our guardianship clients are older relatives who may have existing um, health ailments when they take the child on and into their home. The importance of designating a successor guardian is that if something were to happen to the caregiver, the family wouldn't necessarily need to come back to court, but the guardianship would pass on to the successor guardian without further court involvement and the child could continue to remain out of the foster care system. Because guardianship is a more palatable option for many families, parents often consent to the guardianship. If the parents consent, however, there still needs to be a guardianship hearing in which the court is shown the, the requirements of guardianship are satisfied. If the parents don't consent, then the person seeking guardianship will need to show that the guardianship is still in the best interest of the child and that the court should proceed with granting the guardianship without the parents' consent. Because guardianship is a more flexible and appealing option for many families, parents often consent to guardianship. However, even if the parents consent, there will need to be a guardianship hearing in which the person who has filed for guardianship shows that their requirements of guardianship have been met. If the parents don't consent, the court can still find that the guardianship is in the child's best interest without the parent's consent, but the, the person seeking guardianship will have to show why the guardianship is in the child's best interest even without the parent's consent. Guardianship proceedings are governed by DC Code Section 16-2381 and the DC Superior Court Administrative Order 0205. During a guardianship hearing, the court must determine that guardianship is in the best interest of the child, that adoption or reunification are not appropriate in this case. They must also find that the guardian is suitable and that the home is safe and permanent for the child. 
You'll be able to put on this evidence by having your client testify and often whoever the current social worker is. Sometimes other family members will also testify about why the home is safe and permanent, why the guardian is suitable, and why adoption or reunification are not going to be appropriate for this child at this point in time. After a guardianship proceeding, the court can issue findings of fact and conclusions of law, as well as the permanent order for guardianship. Even after this order has been entered, however, the guardian may not relocate more than 100 miles from their residence at the time the order entered without notice to the court and parties. And this is yet another way that guardianship is different from adoption. In an adoption case, um, the child would become legally the child of the adoptive parent and therefore if the adoptive parent wanted to move, they would not have, have to notify the court or any of the other parties. In a guardianship case, the guardian is still responsible for letting the other parties know if they're going to relocate with the child and they're also responsible for letting the court know. The first step in beginning a guardianship case is to file a motion for permanent guardianship. This can be filed any time after the neglect petition is filed, but usually takes place after an adjudication of neglect. Once a motion for permanent guardianship has been filed, the court will set an, a date for an evidentiary hearing on the motion. Usually this happens 45 days after service. So once you've filed your motion for guardianship with the court, the court will order that the birth parents be personally served with the summons and a copy of the motion. The service will be completed by the diligent search unit of the Child and Family Services Agency. The diligent search unit will go and look for the birth parents and if they are able to locate them, personally serve them with a summons and a copy of the motion. If personal service cannot be completed, usually because diligent search, the diligent search unit is not able to locate the parents, the, then the court may order constructive service. If you're the attorney representing the person who has filed for guardianship, you may want to file a motion for constructive service. This motion is a motion to the court asking that the court authorize service by posting and usually you attach a file, um, you attach with the motion uh, an affidavit of div diligent efforts completed by the diligent search unit about their efforts to locate the birth parent. So it's clear that there was, a, there was an attempt to search and locate the birth parent, but th that was unsuccessful, which requires the um, service by posting. Once service has been completed, either personal service or constructive service, then you'll be going to trial. At trial, you'll be held to the standard of preponderance of the evidence, meaning that you'll have to show by a preponderance of the evidence that guardianship with your client is in the child's best interests. After trial, the court will issue an order for permanent guardianship. This will only happen after a guardianship subsidy agreement has been signed by your client and after the child has been living with your client for six months. The order of guardianship will be issued along with the findings of fact and conclusions of law. If you are successful at trial, you can offer to draft this for the judge Use, using the information that came out at trial as well as um, any ex the evidence from any exhibits that were entered into evidence. Once the final order has been issued, the neglect case becomes inactive. The court retains jurisdiction to enforce, modify, or terminate the order until the child reaches 21 years old. However, you won't be go your client will no longer have to go for regular permanency hearings, there will no longer be regular permanency hearings, and CFSA will no longer be monitoring the client's home. It's still possible for there to be a guardianship for a youth um, 18 to 20 years old. However, the rules have been, for them are somewhat different than they are for children under the age of 18. In 2010, the Adoption Reform Amendment Act changed the law, saying that the family court now has jurisdiction to enter guardianship orders for youth aged 18 to 20. This is an important change in the law because it now allows guardians of youth aged 18 to 20 to receive a subsidy through the time the child turns 21. However, the law is not retroactive, so any guardianships that were entered into before the law was passed, the guardianship subsidy will end at 18. These new guardianships for youth aged 18 to 20 do require the written consent of the child at issue in the guardianship proceeding. Because guardianship orders are final orders, the parties will be able to appeal the decision entered by a judge after a guardianship trial. If the trial is held in front of a magistrate judge, the parties will have 10 days to seek review of the final order. 
If the trial is held in front of an associate judge, the parties will have 30 days to seek review of a final order. Thank you for taking time out of your day to learn about guardianship law in the District of Columbia. We hope that you find working with our guardianship clients as rewarding as we do.